How does the DJI Power 1000 compare to the EcoFlow Delta II? These are very comparable power stations in terms of the size, weight, and functionalities. I'm gonna do an in-depth comparison so you can see why DJI is a better engineered product in such a compact package. Full disclosure, this video is sponsored by DJI, but it's gonna be a fair comparison. I'm gonna let the test results speak for themselves. In this very first test, I'm going to connect not just one, but two DeWalt 12 inch miter saw and a table saw at the same time and see if they can handle it, pushing them to the limit. And will they be able to charge my Tesla Model 3? Cooking with an air fryer, desk power backup, solar charging, and noise tests. So much more later in this video. Compared to... They claim to have extraordinary high power output and surge power handling capabilities. So let's see if that's real. Table saw on the right, miter saw on the left. Power output on the screen. 48% remaining. Well, that was incredible. Some power stations can't even handle one power tool like that. It means they can handle any home appliances, kitchen size, fridge, whatever you can think of. Now let's try the EcoFlow. Looks like it can only drive one power tool. The, the other one got cut off. It's 100%. One is fine. The DJI Power 1000 also has 40% more powerful USB Type-C output. Power delivery 3.1 is supported when USB-C is connected to the latest MacBook with a MagSafe connection. It will be able to deliver 140 watts. Only uh, EcoFlow, that is only 100 watts as labeled here. So depending on the state of charge or the state of the laptop, you may or may not see the peak output. 130 watts. Nope. Now let's try the EcoFlow. It's really unexpected that I cannot get the USB ports to work. So anyway, you can um, charge uh, basically anything you want. The USB type A ports are rated at 24 each. I can charge my Sony camera, a DJI camera, iPhone. The DJI Power 1000 is super quiet, making it suitable to be used as a UPS, uninterrupted power supply. Uh, I'm gonna show you my desk setup with this power station and how it's getting recharged via the solar panel outside. There are two screw holes on the right side of the unit for mounting the uh, solar charging adapter. The two solar inputs on the unit are bi-directional. You can use them to charge DJI drones. It's a pretty cloudy day, so I'm not getting much solar input. My Apple MacBook Pro 14 inch and the Apple Studio Display Plus monitor lights are only pulling 57, 58 watts will last me six hours at 43%. I will not be surprised if I turn off all these non-essential accessories I probably get over 15 hours or even uh, 20 hours one time from it. 10.30 a.m. So I decided to rely on a fully recharged DJI Power 1000 the next day and see how long it would be able to support my whole desk if I were to have a power outage. I can also connect my Wi-Fi router to it so my internet will not go down during a blackout. It's 6.30. 
the battery is at 49 percent and seven hours left so i think it is reasonable to say i should be able to get about two days of work out of this battery bank if i'm not using the external monitor the laptop will only consume about 20 watts so yeah i will double the run time by just powering a laptop ups switches on in 20 milliseconds as you can see the entire setup is connected here i'm going to pull the plug it, it, it you can charge it and use it at the same time and the whole setup remains on don't be afraid to attach power strips because it only has two ac ports right but you can totally extend the connection by connecting power strips as long as you don't exceed the 1800 watts rating of this cable or power strip this is more powerful than the wall power outlet uh, but just keep in mind that these um, uh, power extension cords or um, power strips usually have a lower rating the EcoFlow Delta 2 can be used in the same way, but sometimes the fan noise gets too loud and becomes super distracting. I have um, a topic on the noise comparison with the DJI and you will hear that DJI is so much quieter. Side by side charging speed comparison of the EcoFlow Delta 2 versus the DJI Power 1000 which is at 16%, 48 minutes remaining according to its dashboard at 1,197 watts input. On the EcoFlow, it is slightly slower, but it's at a higher charge state, um, 54%, 37 minutes remaining. The DJI and the EcoFlow has the same three prog AC charging cord, which is pretty common, easy to find replacements if you ever lose it. Charging the DJI is much, much quieter. I can barely hear any fan noise from where I'm sitting. I believe the air goes in from the left side to the right side. Let's charge the EcoFlow side by side from another line. 49%. The fan is getting pretty loud. 1,175 watts. This is super loud. Compared to now I'm going to compare the solar input efficiency of the DJI Power 1000 and EcoFlow Delta 2. So according to the DJI, we're getting 76 watts input. Now I'm going to disconnect the XD60 cable and plug it in directly into the Delta 2. It has only one input and the solar panel is in the same position. 40 percent 74 75 watts 76 so it's about the same as the uh, dji 1000 they both support amp ppt which means maximum power point uh, tracking so both are pretty efficient with the uh, solar panel connected today is a pretty sunny day so i hooked up the dji power 1000 to three solar panels 100 watts 200 watts and 200 watts using the adapter and each port has a maximum of 200 watts input uh, the power station can take in 800 watts solar input max via these two ports i'm getting 261 watts input from these solar panels and it will take 100 minute to fully recharge from 62 percent all the way to 100%. Based on the spec, it's 800 watts. So you can potentially plug in a higher input ones like a 200 watt solar panel, but these are not always 100% uh, efficient. As you can see here, it's not actually pulling 200 watts. 
So it's okay to oversize the solar panels when you are charging the DJI power station off the grid. I would recommend maybe uh, two of these 200 watts and 100 watt solar panel to be more more cost efficient so that's uh i'm unable to max out the 300 watts uh, due to the uh, smaller solar panel size that i have ac port is always available even when i'm doing solar charging if i want to charge uh, large battery uh, packs from the Volt power tools um, in this way or if you want to charge uh, the drone battery there's the uh, proprietary SDC port but in uh, in this case you might want to add more solar panels definitely otherwise the battery will drain pretty fast and uh, dead in three hours using another battery to charge another battery is not the best idea but if you have enough solar panels it, it makes sense because it does pass through charging from the solar panel from the sun power from the sun to the battery bank as a uh, buffer then it charges other batteries so a ground bonding plug is required if you want to use the power stations to charge electric vehicles Either you connect it directly to the other available port or you use a power strip to do that. 96% Tesla charger is not ready because the power output is not enabled. Now it blinks green. I can take the charger and go connect it to the charging port. Inside The charging current is set to 12 amps. 1,391 watts output. 39 minutes remaining. Let's try it on the EcoFlow. Connect the ground bonding plug, Tesla charger, AC port on. 1,349 watts. The fan is spinning like crazy. There's a lot of lot of fan noise. Keep in mind, both power stations will drain pretty quickly, like 13 minutes left. So you actually have to do this if you uh, want to connect solar panels to it and have it pass through charging you need to reduce the charging amperage to 5 amp then it will last longer which means i'll be able to utilize the solar panels and connect it to the back of the power station to make the charging process last longer those steaks are my dinner i'm gonna cook each piece with an air fryer connected to the DJI Power 1000 and the EcoFlow. It's going to run at 400 degrees Fahrenheit at maximum heat for 10 minutes. 1570 watts. I want to point out that the air fryer was cold Therefore, the DJI Power 1000 worked very hard at the beginning to bring the temperature up. Then the power consumption fluctuates a little bit. Your results may vary based on the model of your appliance. Well, it's done. Let's check it out. Seventy five percent left, one hundred percent. Same setting. It has um, much uh, lower power output, about fifty, sixty watts less, and it's very loud. Since the air fryer is already very hot, the EcoFlow didn't have to work as hard as the DJI. At the beginning, uh, I guess that may explain why the power output is a bit smaller. And it had more battery percentage left okay, at done. the end. 80% left. 
but the, uh, the EcoFlow actually has a slight advantage here because the air fryer was preheated by the DJI. DJI has 75% left, so spend the extra uh, 5% to preheat the oven. And of course, I can use the microwave. One thousand six hundred and forty-three watts. The all-feature lithium-ion battery cells, which means incredible longevity and safety. Uh, about three thousand charging cycles, and it will still be able to maintain eighty percent of their battery originally designed battery capacity. Well, DJI says four thousand charging cycles with 70% of remaining capacity. It doesn't mean you cannot use it uh, after 10 years or after it's being recharged for 4,000 times. It just means after these charging cycles, it will still be able to maintain 70% of capacity and you will still be able to use it. I also want to mention the uh, charging speed selection switch you may want to reduce the charging speed for several reasons by selecting the 600 watts because sometimes you may uh, share the AC line with other um, appliances like a microwave with a huge power draw so um, you may want to avoid overheating your line and um, uh, stay within 1800 watts uh, in a very hot room, the unit may get very hot when it's charging uh, at uh, full speed. Therefore, you might want to use the 600 watts. To sum up, I think the DJI Power 1000 is a much, much refined product considering its tremendous power output and the faster USB Type-C charging, although neither of them can take USB-C input to recharge themselves. It is clearly designed for people who need the extra kick. If you need that kind of surge power output handling capability, you can't go wrong with the DJI Power 1000. Um, although it has less AC ports and less USB uh, type A ports, but I don't think that's a deal breaker. You can easily work around it by adding a power strip to it and get as many you you AC power outputs as you want. Keep in mind you, you keep all these power output under 1800 watts not because this thing can't handle it, it's because regular power strips usually don't have that kind of uh, pass-through capacity. And these are, you know, much much more capable than your wall power outlet. 175 miles range or 74% before charging. Looks like the battery is dead. I gained two miles range. 